I want to try and get this meeting uh, to order. And uh, so I'm going to open up the meeting of all island selectmen. Welcome everybody. Uh, it's nice to see most of the towns represented. We're working on Aquina, so we'll keep working on them. And Aquina, if you're watching this, we'd love to have you come to the meetings. I know it's a long drive. Uh, so we have a few items on our agenda tonight, um, but uh, I wanted to start the meeting off. We're really uh, lucky that we have both our newly elected state representative, Dylan Fernandez, and our newly elected state senator, Julian Sear, here. So, A, I wanted to welcome them and then uh, give them maybe, I know they've already got elected, so they don't have to give a campaign speech, but maybe say a few words. And then uh, maybe we'll take some time for uh, some questions from the board or things that we might love to see you uh, working at. So, uh, I guess, uh, first of all, I want to give you guys an applause. Congratulations. And, uh, I guess I'll pick on the state rep first. So Dylan, uh, you got the floor, and thanks for coming. Wherever you feel comfortable. Awesome. Well, thank you all uh, for having us. We just came from an LGBT youth event over at OB, uh, which was terrific, and there's a lot of community support for LGBT youth and trans youth, and I just think that's terrific. Um, I. you over the past few months. Um, I'm going to keep harassing you. Uh, and so my predecessor uh, did a terrific job of reaching out to the local communities, asking for input and being accessible, uh, open, and engaging. And I hope to continue that tradition and also build on it. Uh, everyone here should have my cell phone number. If you don't, it's just on the front page of the website. And once we get business cards, uh, they'll, they'll be on there, those as well. And so um, want to continue that tradition of being here for you uh, always. And in the past, you know, in the past seven days, um, I'll be here four times. So I am, you know, I'll be here more on, on the vineyard than I will in my own hometown. So um, I'm, I'm continuing a commitment to be here um, present in the community working for you. And I know that from the local level, um, and this, this rings true across our district, but especially the vineyard, too often we're overlooked up on Beacon Hill. And a part of that is just because when you look at kind of uh, the representation up there, you have 37 representatives for the Boston area alone, right? And for Vineyard and Nantucket, you just have one, uh, and that's me. But we have a really mighty Cape delegation uh, that is small but works really well together and works across the aisle together to get things done for our local communities. And a part of our strength is the strength of the local Local communities behind us. So I'm going to be asking for your help on initiatives going forward and looking forward to working with you. And I'm really just thrilled to have a terrific partner and Julian Sear uh, to be along with me. And Julian and I talk on a daily basis, sometimes even bother him so much I work out of his office because I'm in a bullpen, right? Now. Um, so we're going to be working really closely together to advocate for, for you, and please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. So um, I'm Julian Sear. Uh, in, uh, I think this is day six as your uh, state senator on the job. Uh, Dylan and I are working so closely that we're actually, we even coordinate outfits. Uh, if you notice, we're both in, in, in a similar matching um, uh, jackets. Uh, I do have to say I'm jealous of Dylan because uh, the district that I am really privileged to represent uh, is a little bit bigger. It stretches from Provincetown to Mashpee and then it's Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so I can't be here. Um, every week, four days a week, uh, though I would love to uh, be. I'm someone who uh, was born and raised and lives uh, in Truro. Uh, so a community that's far away but in composition. Um, being on island really reminds me of, of, of being uh, at home, uh, of, a, of a small community for folks kind of living 
working out at Land's End, um, both knowing the real joys of, of what it is to build a life uh, in a community that takes a lot of adaptability and the real challenges and isolation uh, that we face. Uh, I'm here tonight with my uh, district director, Leslie Sandberg, who is a fellow Outer Cape president, so someone also who appreciates uh, living uh, kind of out there on an island, on Land's End, um, and actually all of our staff that we've hired, uh, and my team, everyone, uh, everyone in our Cape Codders, uh, so folks who grew up in the district, uh, live in the district, uh, would love to find, um, uh, in addition to relying on Kaylee, of course, uh, an island intern or someone like that, so if you, if you know anyone, please please uh, send us um, our way. Um, and I'm just here to listen and to learn uh, and to work as closely as possible uh, with Representative Fernandez to meet uh, our community's needs, uh, to make sure that Beacon Hill hears our needs and really gives us the flexibility to address um, the, pretty, the pretty significant challenges and issues our community face. Um, all across the district, I spent 13 months campaigning for this position, uh, which is a real privilege I got to hear from people what was on their minds and people from Nantucket to Chilmark to Chatham to Barnstable to Provincetown all feel and know that the conditions of how we built our life here on island how we built our life here on the Cape uh, those are changing our communities um, are not becoming our communities have become already profoundly unaffordable and that if that we really don't change what we're doing from an affordability perspective at housing uh, we're really going to struggle to meet all the challenges we face, whether it's building the wastewater infrastructure we need to address the really significant nitrogen loading that we have in our communities, uh, to meet the needs of a rapidly aging population, already the oldest in the Commonwealth and getting older, uh, to make sure we steward our environment, uh, to, and really ensure that we keep the tremendous um, cultural and economic engine that is our communities, uh, 13 weeks, uh, three or four months a year, um, humming. Uh, and so I'm just really excited to, to roll up my sleeves. I think folks saw how hard Dylan worked in, this, in, in, our, in, in his campaign, how hard our team worked in our campaign, uh, and we're just going to be doing that. So uh, looking forward to being on, on island as much as I can. Um, we are just as accessible. Uh, I'll make sure. Um, please email me, call me, uh, and also please invite me and our team to uh, events and opportunities. So you know this is part of the district that I really love, but I, I, I know the Outer Cape a little better than I know you know Up Island. And, uh, so if there are events that are coming and opportunities, please let me know. Uh, please let Dylan know. Invite us to those. Uh, if I can't make it, we'll work to send a, a surrogate or someone else. Um, and then I guess on, on a more technical note with business, uh, the first order of business that we have coming up is bill filing deadline. So January 20th, bills are to be filed uh, in the legislature. If you have an idea for a piece of legislation, uh, let us know. Uh, of course, home rule petitions, um, which are a, a favorite mechanism uh, for us in this region. Um, we're gonna be working on those, but please let us know that's sort of the first order of business that comes up. Uh, and then really the second big thing we do um, is the budget, which uh, Dylan will take care of for us in the House, and then I'll work on uh, in the Senate in May. So thank you again for um, having both of us here. Uh, I look forward to, to being back here often uh, and glad to take any kind of questions, concerns, comments that you folks have now um, and in the future. I'm sorry, I'd just like to quickly add, um, and I, I'm sorry I didn't do this before, but Kaylee uh, Moore, who's a who's just terrific advocate for Tim and for uh, Tim Madden, my predecessor, and also just for the island in general, is going to be continuing on as my local liaison. Absolutely. My aide in the state house is also an islander, although he's from an island off of Maine. So I've only hired <laughs> islanders. So we're in good hands. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Great. So um, I'm going to turn to uh, fellow selectmen, county commissioners. Is there any quick comments or questions that you might have for our senator or state rep? So I'd like to say thank you for coming. Um, it means an awful lot to us that you extend yourselves and actually show up. Um, and congratulations, and we wish you the best of luck and whatever we can do to help you and your efforts. Don't ever hesitate to call on us. 
I just like to echo that also. Uh, that your presence here has been astonishing, and uh, I know we're all uh, excited and grateful that uh, we have two uh, young men so dedicated uh, to helping us. Uh, I personally am um, very grateful, and uh, I, I know it's going to be a lot of hard work. Uh, but you guys are up to the task, and uh, we're very appreciative of your attention to us. Thank you. Warren? Uh, you mentioned home rule petitions, which is important to all of us here. We don't have, do we have to have home rule petitions in by January 20th? Uh, right. Yes. Right. And on home rules, uh, Dylan's the guy you start with, uh, right? right? Yeah, you start with oh, I think it, Yeah, I think it's that uh, house. Um, generally, what can we do to help you? Um, I think it's continuing to reach out about issues facing the local community. Uh, you know, you're the voice on the local level, and we're always going to be reaching out to you to see what's going on, because you know it better than anyone, and you have your, your ear to the ground uh, and your feet on the ground locally. And so just... Um, you know, we'll reach out, but also just proactively reach out to us uh, to let us know about what you're hearing and the issues that you're facing. And, you know, I, I, I would add, um, as you are trying to address issues in your community, and when you run, when you run into uh, barriers or snags that relate to state regulations, state programs, please call and let us know. Um, one, just, just the mechanics of getting through things, but also, um, you know, for a lot of the challenges we're facing, uh, you know, you're addressing housing issues, a lot of it rates back to a certain statute that's there that may be a barrier. If you can help identify that for us, then we can begin to look at how we go about updating a certain statute or regulation, um, um, providing flexibility, providing innovation, so looking for those opportunities. On, on, on almost all the issues we face, a lot of the solutions uh, arise at the local level. Uh, the challenge is that municipalities often, um, one, run into a barrier, right, with, with some sort of state program, policy, law, regulation, um, or two, don't necessarily have the resources or staff to, to look into something. So if you have a big idea or a small idea, um, actually I was talking with a colleague tonight about, earlier today, about home uh, green burials is an issue, and, 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 and green burials are something that I think folks are wanting to do more and more. Uh, maybe that's something you know we can put our heads together and look into and, and talk to some folks and begin to work on. I'm using that as an example. Um, so I think that's specifically helpful. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's hard to, you know, the scale of both the districts is hard to have someone who's at all the select meetings, uh, who's attending and participating in everything. Um, and then if you're in Boston, uh, for whatever reason, please come and visit us on Beacon Hill. Um, if we're not there, our staff will be there. Uh, and if you need any resources or support there, um, please let us know. Yes, absolutely, Walter. Uh, again, thank you for being here, both of you. Congratulations. Uh, my biggest concern is uh, at the state level with funding of uh, any help you can give us or any help that you have given us not going away. Uh, as you know, uh, this Prop 2 and a half is a tough thing to live within, and both our high school and, and our local schools are well above the Prop 2 and a half levels and have been for quite a while. So it's very difficult for all of us to try and live within our means. Um, our, our initial budget went into our finance committee Tuesday, and right now we're not talking about any overrides or anything of the sort. <coughs> But um, we're really on, on a very thin string here. So uh, I would ask you to keep an eye on what the state is doing budget-wise and with respect to any uh, funds that can come back to us. Our state aid in Oak Bluffs is about this big. And we can't afford to have even that go away. So please help us in that regard if you would. Thank you. Melinda? Um, I'd like to echo everybody else's welcome and congratulations too and appreciate your being here. And you alluded to the fact that bills are being getting ready to be filed. And I know you've only been on the job for six days, but are you working on any bills that we should know about and maybe be following and helping to cheerlead for? Or? 
Uh, so we're, fi we're going to file about uh, about two dozen bills to start. Um, and I should just say with this bill filing deadline, this is just sort of the initial uh, initial deadline. A legislator can file a bill at any time, so don't don't feel totally hamstrung by this. Um, to address uh, on, on the housing affordability piece, something that I've really noticed is that people who, you know, if you're living on an island or you're living on the Cape and you're paying rent or you're looking to actually purchase or buy something, your housing costs are sort of the equivalent of what a mortgage would be, right? Um, but a real challenge for folks, especially young folks, is being able to um, cobble together the money to save for a down payment. Uh, so I'm proposing a first time home buyer savings account program. It's a tax free program, it's sort of akin to a um, um, a health savings or, or rather a, a health payment account. Uh, so it's tax free. Um, we're working to find a mechanism where employers can, can provide matching funds to that uh, so that not only um, people can have an incentive to be able to save to put down um, a down payment for a mortgage, but you know, a place like the, the hospital, uh, if, if they were able to, um, could even match funds uh, for that. So that's just one piece in looking at, you look at our housing issue, right? Um, so many of us make too much to really qualify for the existing affordable housing programs, but, but not really enough to actually be able to afford anything that's market rate here. I mean, even as, as your state senator, um, you know, Dylan and I make a, a perfectly fine salaries uh, as, as state legislators. Um, we would be hard pressed to be able to afford to purchase almost anything in our districts. Um, and so I think that's a, a piece that we're looking at. Um, more specific to the island, we're going to uh, refile uh, Tim Madden's ocean acidification bill. Uh, we're looking because at. Cost, I'll be filing that in the house. We'll actually do it jointly, so we'll be. Uh, there's a little mechanism where you can actually file it, so you're both you're both the sponsors. Um, we're working on some legislation, some public health legislation. Vegetation management's a big concern and issue um, around rights of way, uh, and a number of uh, proposals on Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station as well. Uh, the delegation we met earlier this week. Uh, there's a lot of concern around Pilgrim, not only the safety of this plant and getting it to close sooner rather than later, uh, but as we're moving to closure of this plant. Uh, how the plant is decommissioned uh, is really critical to our region. Uh, if the utility and NRC kind of has their has their way, this power plant's going to be mothballed up to the next 60 years, uh, which is a major major risk, uh, especially given the, the spent fuel pool that we have in Pilgrim. Uh, so we're really the delegation is exploring ways around how do we we have very limited authority over this facility because it's regulated by the feds. Um, how do we cajole shame and incentivize the utility to, to move to talk towards a swift decommissioning. Um, so those, those are some of the some of the ideas that we have that we'll be proposing. Um, if you know of legislation, uh, send it up to us or you know of the legislation that's being filed that we should co-sponsor, uh, please let us know. And if you have a great idea coming up, um, you know, chime in and, and, and we'll look at it. I was speaking with Noli Taylor actually uh, at a nutrition summit today and we had discussed a bill, we're, fi we're filing a bill around um, uh, a bill that Tim Madden had filed uh, last session on um, nutrition and farm to school work. Uh, so we're going to refile that with Rep. Jen Benson. But um, Noli and I came up with a whole other idea when we were meeting. So, so don't be don't be shy about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tristan. Um, uh, Richard, gentlemen, uh, the state forest is a major piece of real estate here on on the island and for those towns that have pieces of it within their boundaries we get payments essentially in lieu of taxes from the state and every budget cycle it seems that um, that has to be defended uh, rather uh, aggressively by you guys uh, so that we the towns get those payments and then we just call it to your attention that we do depend on that a lot and uh, as the budget comes up and goes through in one thing or another it's definitely an item to watch because aside from school aid and chapter 90 money for the roads and so forth the payment uh, due to the state forest is a pretty big chunk of change for um, a lot of us so Actually, you know, to, to Mr. Vale's point earlier, if your towns have um, you know, even a short list of resources you receive from the state, even if it's you know little like ten thousand dollar, thirty thousand dollar chunks of things, please let us know that it's really hard. Um, um, uh, 
the way that the funding is structured in state government is it often hard to know what's going to your communities, especially if it's going through a procurement process. So being able to add that up and have a sense of that uh, is really helpful going into the budget. Um, you know, certainly, I, I know both Dylan and I are going to you know, always argue to get more resources from a local aid perspective, from a chapter 70 perspective, from a chapter 90 perspective. Dylan mentioned the arithmetic of uh, our representation on Beacon Hill, uh, which we're also really aware of, I'm really aware of. Uh, and so one of the things I'm going to be trying to argue um, is that, all right, I get that um, when compared to many other communities in the Commonwealth, our communities have a relatively low uh, tax rate um, and are seen rightly or wrongly, <coughs> largely wrongly, wrongly as being privileged in many ways. Um, and so that if the argument is we can't get more resources, then I'm really interested in giving our communities the resources to generate revenue uh, in ways that are not just based on flat property tax increases. Uh, because so many of us who live here uh, are either living on fixed incomes or you know our families or we bought in a long time ago and we may be land rich, uh, but that doesn't mean you know that, that we're also cash poor. So it's another kind of angle I'm, we're trying to look at. I'm trying to look at. Um, as uh, I know Chapter 70 is likely to be discussed this session, there's going to be a big uh, big debate in the Senate, uh, a big push around transportation investment in the Senate. Uh, so if there's transportation issues, certainly uh, the steamship, I'm sure, is, uh, is always on the forefront of your minds. But um, those are some of the issues we'll be taking. But if you could, we, we actually sent letters to all the town man managers, and I think all of you folks, um, so if you could let us know, or your town managers could let us know, uh, both Dylan and I, sort of what that tally of state resources are, we can, you know, I, I would have never had an idea of the state forest until until that was flagged. So that sort of information is really helpful. Chris, I just want to add on to that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, also to add on kind of the revenue piece of getting more funds for our local municipalities, let us know if you're in a grant writing process and how we can be helpful in making an additional pitch there. Maybe it's uh, a direct reach out uh, to, uh, to the agency or, or the, the person uh, making the grant, or, or maybe it's you know us writing a letter. Whatever we can do to tr help secure extra funding, let us know. And we just need a heads up on that. We'd be happy. Uh, to add uh, an advocacy piece uh, to that. Um, also, and just wanted to uh, touch base on, on a couple of bills that we're going to be working on as well. Uh, we're, we're working together and with a couple others on a student borrower's bill of rights to help um, uh, young people, people out of college, uh, with their student loan debt. Um, and there's going to be an education piece to that as well. Uh, there's going to be criminal justice reforms going to be coming up uh, as a big issue facing the legislature. So we're going to be working uh, really heavily on that. Um, and I also wanted to flag for you something more on the local level that I'm going to be filing as a home rule for Nantucket, and that's going to be a housing bank. And I think this is something that will be of uh, really high interest uh, to the island, depending and throughout the process. Um, so their housing bank is set up that it's uh, a five percent, um, a point, a half a percent uh, tax on transactions over two million dollars. So it's a three million dollar home. Uh, Half a percent on half a percent on that is fifty thousand dollars. That goes into uh, this housing bank. But a very similar concept to the land bank that's set up here. There's been a lot of opposition from the Realtors Association on this. I've been in conversations with them and others. Uh, but something that I will keep you up to date on, and something to keep an eye on uh, from the vineyard perspective, because I think this is something that I've I've heard about here on island as well as something that uh, uh, we might want locally. That's quite all right. Just three or four things. You don't necessarily have to react to them. They're just comments or questions. One, we are privileged to have two people so young that you believe you can do anything. And uh, we will appreciate that attitude throughout. <laughs> Uh, backing up on what Melinda said, I was sitting here thinking, if, there's, if you think of a vehicle that you can let us know what's going on up there, not that we're a huge voice, but we would be glad to weigh in on that. And I think sometimes 
we don't always know what's going on. So if there were, whether that was newsletter or website or whatever, that might be something to think about. Um, I would really encourage you to get the town administrators together and look at, at what their issues are. Um, Richard, I would say, I wish we had a little piece of the state forest in Oak Bluffs because that's one of the, uh, Bob Rittenauer did a study on that on uh, the money that comes in from the state and we are one of the poor sisters or whatever you want to call it that doesn't have a piece of that and and I think that is important to recognize um, particularly towns like us that don't have that extra revenue our, we're essentially as Walter said earlier neutral uh, we've actually been in the negative and I know Tisbury is as well uh, just recently we've gotten into the positive I think thanks to Tim sitting down with school officials and trying to adjust state aid a little bit to help us out at least to get beyond negative. So again, I, I would encourage you to maybe try to put them all together. I am really happy that you have the same housing problem individually because that means you're going to recognize and work on that because I think that's a huge problem. Um, and. Uh, I think I hit on the schools, but I, you know, the school and and state formula to the schools. I think that's an important, you know, an important issue, and I hope you get some feedback on that. Thank you. Um, Leon. Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, Dylan and Julian for being here. I've known them both throughout the campaign and being a vice chair of the party, knowing them even better. Uh, I just want to see, can you give any light, any shed any light on the budget cuts that we're now experiencing for the county and what you think is going to happen in the next several days about getting those monies restored back to the county that we had cut? So these, 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 you mean the 9C cuts? Yes. Um, so there is, uh, the legislature is likely to take up what's called a, a supplemental budget. Uh, uh, all money bills uh, start in the House, so you can first pester, pester Dylan to, to start getting this down. Um, there is some conversation about sort of the powers that be, and Dylan and I are, are not yet in these rooms, but we're going to work hard to get in these rooms. Uh, in the course of our service, uh, looking at revenue projections uh, in uh, into January, uh, the December projections or the December revenues seemed a little depressed from what they expected. Um, from a personal perspective, uh, I find I found the cuts that the governor made uh, were capricious uh, and were also purposely planned. So when I worked in the Department of Public Health, I actually was in the last budget cycle. I, I was. Uh, working on budgetary issues, was doing spending plans. Uh, the administration has, has purposely sat on certain earmarked money, um, has not distributed money to uh, under the budget, uh, which is a state law, um, and essentially uh, drags its feet for half the fiscal year, makes nine C cuts, and basically uh, funds the governor's agenda and, and not what the legislature determined. Uh, folks on Beacon Hill are really angry about this, uh, especially around issues of um, uh, some of the responses for uh, opiate treatment. I know cuts uh, for tourism are very significant, um, but you know it remains to be seen what is what exactly is taken up. The the latest thing I, I sort of read and, and heard on this has been that you know there'll be resources to take up some of this, but not all of this. And so you know opioids or tourism, county funding. Um, It'll be interesting to see see how that, that, that plays out. Um, I do think that as a region, especially from a tourism perspective, um, we're the third, tourism's the third largest element of the economy in Massachusetts. Um, you wouldn't know that if you're on Beacon Hill. Um, from a, a, a vocal perspective, from a lobbying perspective, there really isn't a presence there. Uh, and so, the tourism funding, um, which I know impacted the island, uh, was cut because it's an easy cut um, and is likely is going to be a harder lift to be restored because we don't hear from um, the businesses and the communities and the individuals on this of how important that is. I think that's something as a region we were meeting with uh, Representative Sarah Peake, who's the dean of the delegation, Senator Vinny DiMacito, uh, who represents the Upper Cape. And this is something I think we're eager to work on. But um, 
we're going to do everything in our power to try to restore these cuts. Uh, from an implementation perspective, the way it is done is it's really unfair to the organizations receiving the funding. Even if we end up restoring the money, by the time you get that money, it's going to be the spring and you've got to spend it by the end of uh, June 30th. So it's really bad, poor fiscal management, and I'm not, not happy about that. Um, but, but still looking at tea leaves as to far as to what exactly is going to happen. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Julian? Yes. I, Julian could be more correct on all of that and uh, really well put. Uh, another piece that I would just add, um, you know, this pr part of a broader kind of revenue piece in our state where our economy is doing really well in Massachusetts, but the revenue projections uh, don't reflect that. And so finding new sources of revenue, I think, is a conversation that needs to be had. And uh, we're going to be seeing that coming up this year. Uh, it's been strongly hinted and suggested, and I don't want to guarantee it, but I think it's a near guarantee that the uh, kind of the B and B tax, as it's now the Airbnb tax, as it's kind of known colloquially, colloquially will be coming up. Um, that's something that, that could also raise revenues locally in a big way, but also um, for our state coffers to help with the potential supplemental budget as well. But again, you know, to echo Julian, we're going to know a lot more at the end of January, depending on our revenue. Thank you. Okay, um, Walter. Very quickly, OPEB continues to be a big item, which um, I, I saw the, the number attached to uh, the towns in Massachusetts is a $30 billion problem, and at the state level it's a $16 billion problem, and it's not going away. I did see that it's, it's languished for about the last uh, four years in the, in the legislature. And I'd love for you guys to try and give us some help. I mean, the numbers attached just to our town are just uh, astronomical. And they're impossible for us to deal with. Just impossible. Somebody's got to come up with some kind of a, a solution that, that's going to work for all of us. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just not working the way it is. So if you guys would put that on your list, put it in front of the legislature and see what, we can, see what you can do, I'd love to hear back from you on that one. Okay, um, I'm not seeing anybody else. Um, I just add my one half cents, a um, couple of things. Um, there are, what, 13 communities on the Cape, I think, if I got that right, or something like that, right? Not 15 on the Cape. 15 on the Cape. 13 are in, in my district. So I tried, and some of others here too as well, for many years to get us to be part of the Cape and Island Selectmen's Association. They would meet at 7.30 in the morning in Hyannis, and I wrote letters, emails, I tried for years, can't you just make it an hour later so some of us could attend? The end result after many years is I think they now call themselves the Cape <laughs> Selectmen's Association and the word islands is gone. We are six we are six communities here. And if there's anything you can do which would make your lobby I mean it just even just from a point of view of you know how many communities are represented, you know, some people on the Cape think we're just Martha's Vineyard and we are six towns. So anything you guys can do to facilitate uh, are opening up, uh, you know, better uh, communication and participation with the Cape Selectmen. <coughs> There's another reason for that. Over the past couple of years, we've been advocating here um, because a lot of services that we used to get where Cape would apply for grants, Cape and Islands, we weren't accessing. They were accessing, and now we're working really hard, and I hope you guys will help us keep that island part of that. But in having that communication, that also helps us when there are initiatives and things going on on the Cape that we're just not you know, privy to. So anything you can do on that level would be appreciated. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, because it was sort of in passing, I, the, you've already made a great decision in keeping Kaylee Moore. Um, her style, she's unlike somebody like me, she's calm, she's She's <laughs> collected, she's responsive, and I, and I can see, you know, that she worked so hard for us. So you've made, you've already, at least you got one thing on the plus column already, so in my book. So um, if there's nothing else to add, um, Warren? Just a uh, very positive note. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, board of directors of the Martha's Vineyard Fisherman's Preservation Trust, 
and we have been working hard at resolving certain permitting issues where it's very hard for young people to get permits in limited access fisheries. And we've recently gotten terrific cooperation from the director of Division of Marine Fisheries, David Pierce, and Dan McKiernan. And I just put in a positive note that they recently made some policy decisions that we think uh, give a lot of flexibility to communities who want to support their fishing fleet. That's what I was going to ask you. And Tristan, to your point, uh, especially about the Cape Cod Selectmen's Association, uh, being someone who lives in Truro, I spent many mornings uh, in the past year driving to meetings uh, in Sandwich at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I think they could do a better job just being more inclusive from a, a timing perspective. Um, you know, and, and that's something I can you certainly raise. Of, of course you can. <laughs> and, and maybe part of it is, is, is like, all right, you know, once a month might be too much, but you know, quarterly there's some sort of meeting. Um, and I think if, if there are ways that, uh, you know, both of us, but especially, um, you know, the, the state senator for the Cape and Islands is sort of the official who gets to represent all these areas. Um, any way that I can assist really in facilitating um, collaboration between not only select boards, but 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 other, you know, other uh, boards and activities in the towns. We're all kind of facing many of the same issues, just in profoundly different communities. But 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 the issues are, are, are really similar. Um, actually, Providence and Nantucket, uh, the select boards have started. Uh, having a, an exchange on housing issues. So if, if ever, um, you know, I can help serve as a connector there for you folks, um, you know, because really, you know, what, what Chillmark is, you know, what Chillmark is looking at is actually probably really similar to what we're dealing with in Toronto um, and similar to other communities. So I will I will raise the selectmen's issue. Um, I know a few of the folks uh, who lead that organization, so. Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, I want to thank you so much for coming. We look forward to working with you in the next few years. And uh, praising you and giving you grief when we think you're just, you need it. And anyway, thank you so much for coming.